I have a record of like almost every when Biden when the Build Back Better thing was coming out when Bi when Bernie Sanders was writing it when Democrats were getting behind it and it was like oh they might do a three point five trillion dollar bill I was hyped so when they failed I was I disapproved did you see where Anna told the TYT left to arm themselves do I agree. Let, let's watch this and I'll give a comment. Just remind me to tell you what I think. The Biden administration thought it would be a fantastic idea. The Biden administration thought it would be a fantastic idea to launch a war against progressive activists who uh, rallied, canvassed, did what they could to ensure that Biden won over Trump in 2020. And uh, nothing made it clearer than the Washington Post releasing a breathtaking piece indicating that the administration has just had enough with progressive activists. They think that they're out of line, okay? Progressive activists, Biden administration would like you to sit down and stop asking them to do things like, you know, lead the country on issues that they campaigned on. Now, according to this piece in the Washington Post, White House officials defend the urgency of Biden's response and the actions he has taken on abortion, which they argue are in step with mainstream opinion. Quote, the president has been showing his deep outrage as an American and executing his bold plan, yeah. <laughs> which is the product of months of hard work ever since the decision was handed down, end quote, White House Communications Director Kate Bedingfield said in a statement Saturday. But she's not done yet. Guns until the revolution. When the revolution comes, you will find all the weapons you need. You just have to be willing to use them. Uh, Dragon Army, uh, I think that um, there's some truth to that, but we'll, we'll, get, we'll, we'll talk about it later. This is what's been getting a lot of attention over the weekend for obvious reasons. She said, quote, Joe Biden's goal in responding to Dobbs is not to satisfy some activists who have been consistently out of step with the mainstream of the Democratic Party. It's to deliver help to women who are in danger and assemble a broad based coalition to defend a woman's right to choose now, just as he assembled such a coalition to win during the 2020 campaign. So let's actually hear from one of those activists before we go off, okay? What you're about to hear from Ashley Allison, who is one of those progressive activists who is not only disappointed with how the Biden administration responded to the stripping of reproductive rights of women in this country, but is disappointed in the way activists like her are now being treated by the Biden administration. Let's watch. I was disappointed in that statement as an activist. Um, as someone, she nodded to the coalition that Joe Biden built. I ran the coalition's department on that campaign. Guess who was a part of that coalition? Activists. Um, and 2020, when people took to the streets because of the death of George Floyd, it invigorated the base in a way that allowed us to have record turnout. Now, yeah, we, we were fighting um, an authoritarian president like Donald Trump, but these people going into the street saying that we need a bodily autonomy, that is the excitement that Democrats need right now ahead of the midterms and to demonize them and say, you know, they're not mainstream. Well, abortion is a very popular issue in the country and it goes across Democratic and Republican lines. I think it was an unforced error and I hope they address it. I'm not sure they will, but it, I took it offense to it and a lot of people have. I don't blame her for taking offense to it. I take offense to that kind of statement, again, especially considering the fact that they're specifically attacking people who did the work, okay, engaged in the ground game necessary to ensure that Biden won the election, that two Democratic senators in Georgia won the runoff elections um, after the general election in 2020. And now to turn your back on them and say, oh, they're out of line. They're out of step with the mainstream Democratic Party. So what exactly does the mainstream Democratic Party represent? Does it represent this weak, tepid response to something that's as serious as women losing autonomy over their own bodies? Is that what they represent? I mean, what the- I think Matt Chrisman from Chapo Trap House said it best. All of our politics has been devolved, at least in the, in the mainstream parties, into two- broad categories. One category is don't be an asshole. That's the Democratic Party. Anything that inconveniences someone, anytime you raise your voice, 
Anytime you say someone should lose and someone else should win, that's being an asshole. That's making waves. And oh, no, 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 that's not part of the... That's, that's uncivil. Don't be an asshole. That's the Democratic Party. Now, they didn't like Trump because he was the mega asshole. He was the loud and proud asshole, right? So he really was easy for Democrats to go, and he would, he spat on institutions and norms and uh, respectability politics, right? That's why they really hated Trump. They really hated Trump. Biden is the same guy who chastised activists and black leaders during a conference call when they told him that when he won, that he needed to use executive orders to address criminal justice. It wasn't executive orders as well. They wanted him to pass civil rights laws, which he failed to do. And yes, yes. And those weren't even like activists. Those were like, those were like Biden. That was like the Democratic Party's tamed group. You know, the people that are in ser servitude to people like Joe Biden. That is, that is the people that he spat on. The most loyal Biden supporters in the black community, he spat on them. Pathetic. Mike is, no. No, Nate, it's not. And then the other category that Matt Crispin raised is the don't be a pussy category. That's the Republican Party. All their vibes, all their presentation, all their stuff is don't be a pussy, don't be soft, don't be compassionate, don't be empathetic, don't be a pussy. We got to stand up for our country. We got to build the wall to keep those immigrants out. We got to throw, lock up, lock up those criminals and throw away the key. We need more guns, but don't be a pussy. So whatever resonates more with you is what party you're in. The don't be an asshole party or the don't be a pussy party. Which one resonates more with you? Now, I don't know about you. Neither resonates with me. Both of those sound fucking terrible. That's what we've got. That's what we've got. So does it surprise you that the don't be a asshole party can never get mad about anything, no matter how bad it is? Because God forbid you be an asshole. That's the worst thing you could be. That's, that's what it is. Democratic party. Where's the do the right thing party? Doesn't exist. Is saying to its base as we speak is, right back. yeah, you know, this is what we're going to, we're not going to do anything for you. And we feel entitled to your vote anyway. So suck it up and stop crying about it. That is essentially what Kate Bedingfield, who's White House communications director, is telling Democratic voters right now. Good luck in the midterms. We'll see how it works out for you. Unbelievable. So they live in an alternate reality. And so I'm done trying to convince them they're hopeless. Uh, the Democratic leadership and everyone who works for them, and most of the reporters in DC, uh, live in a bubble. You can't break the bubble. They'll forever believe things that are absolutely nonsensical. So really, people who are mad about Roe being overturned are not in the mainstream in the Democratic Party, then who the hell's in the mainstream in the Democratic Party? And in their opinion, it's just donors. Donors are the only people who are mainstream in the Democratic Party. You're a woman who's upset, you're a man who's upset about Roe being overturned. Now all of a sudden you're not mainstream Democrat. If you don't agree that Democratic leadership should always do absolutely nothing, apparently you're not in the mainstream of Democrats. And by the way, in Washington, that's actually very true. Like so, and by the way, how can you tell? Just, I mean, one of a thousand ways that you can tell is go on my Twitter account. And the minute I say, hey, would you guys like to do something? You'll see all the people that live in DC going, how dare you? The Democratic Party obviously can never do anything. We must always surrender and you demanding to actually do something is outrageous. So in Washington, that's considered sort of totally normal. I know for the rest of you, you're thinking that can't be, they're really that crazy? No, they are, they're totally nuts. And how do I know I'm right and they're wrong? Because everybody's got their own bubble, right? Uh, the polling. The polling has them at a miserable state right now. Only 26% of Democrats think he should run again. But in their world, they think he's killing it, he's nailing it. And us activists are the ones that are causing the trouble. If they it's not that he is, it's not that uh, Joe Biden isn't doing everything he can. He is, and they're in the far, the centrist extremist bubble. Biden is doing everything he can. Is he doing everything he has the power to do? Fuck no, they all know that. They got a memo that he could cancel all student debt. He knows that he could federally legalize marijuana. 
he knows that he could release every non-violent drug offender in federal prison. He knows that he could use executive authority to do stuff like provide abortion clinics on federal land, right? He could do all of that. But just like they don't want to overrule the parliamentarian or change the filibuster or do anything to help you or protect the country from these crises, they don't want Joe Biden to exercise the full breadth of his power. Why? Well, that might ruffle some feathers. And the reason why Trump uh, or Biden is unpopular is the reason why Biden is unpopular is why people like me and Hassan exist. People like TYT exist. You know, we're convincing everyone to hate Biden with our rhetoric. It's our fault that he's hated. That's what they actually think. That's what they actually think. And then the top, so, you know, people like me, Hassan, you know, Mehdi Hassan, MSNBC, John Oliver, you know, what anybody, you know, Jake, anybody with e on a majority report, anyone with even a micro amount of, 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 uh, 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 criticism from the left is the cause of his fall. Now, somehow we weren't able to get Bernie elected. We didn't have the pool to get Bernie elected, but now it's our fault that Biden is hated. Right? That's how insane they are! But can the Senate abolish the filibuster with a simple majority? Yes. You want me to tell you how they do it? You want me to tell you exactly how they do it? I've said it before on stream, but I'll do it again. This is how you get rid of the filibuster. <clears throat> the Senate Majority Leader moves for a vote for cloture. What is cloture? A cloture vote is a vote by 60 senators to end debate on a bill and bring it to a vote. All right. The cloture vote fails. It's a tie, 50 50. Kamala Harris votes with the tie breaking, uh, with the 50 as the tiebreaker. And she's 50. So it's 51 votes in favor of ending debate, 50 votes against. The, pre the presiding president of the Senate, probably in this case, Kamala Harris, will rule that according to the Senate rules, 60 votes not being achieved, the debate is not ended, and cloture is not agreed to. The filibuster continues. Then, the Senate Majority Leader, or any senator, rises on the floor and objects and says, I appeal the ruling of the chair. I do not be I believe that the way the rule of the cloture vote is interpreted is that in bills relating to Blah, 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 name it. Bills relating to voting rights. The cloture, is, the cloture vote is a simple majority. Then the, uh, uh, the senators rise and they vote on the appeal. And at a simple majority, the, uh, uh, the simple majority of the chamber determines those appeals of the rules. Therefore, 51 senators, including Kamala Harris, voting in favor of of the rule being changed or rule being interpreted in that way, they win. And the filibuster does not apply. Cloture is found to have been agreed to. The debate ends on that bill and then they vote. That's it. That's all they have to do. How do I know this? Mike, how do you know such weird Senate procedure? Because I watched Mitch McConnell do it for Neil Gorsuch. Mitch McConnell did that so that Neil Gorsuch could be appointed to the Supreme Court. And it was about a story for a microsecond. It was not a, like it was a one day on the New York Times front page, I think, and then it was gone. So I watched the I watched the Republican senators do it, and they all voted in favor of it. And I think at the time they had fifty five senators when they did it, and all of them voted for it, from the most conservative Republican to the most moderate. They all voted for ending the filibuster for Supreme Court nominees so that Neil Gorsuch could be appointed. That's it. And the one thing that I find really interesting, and I urge you all to go and spread this message, isn't it funny how all the liberals who are on team Biden, posting him eating ice cream cones and shit, are pulling away from politics as content? Remember how they called me grifters and Hassan grifters and TYT grifters and Majority Report cum guzzlers and all this other shit? But now, politics isn't so interesting. 
Maybe they'll do debates on, you know, some dumbass shit that you could say is obliquely related to politics, but it's mostly not. But the day-to-day -day reality of, like, you know, they were doing horse race shit 24 fuck 7. Now, they have nothing to say about their entire political predictions and prescriptions failing utterly. Isn't that weird? All right, let's keep going. They would, if we would just accept the fact that the Democrats aren't ever, ever, ever supposed to get anything accomplished, then we, then we would know our role and everybody would be happy. No, it's amazing. So they accuse us, by the way, us specifically, because we're critical in a justified manner of the Democratic Party and its ineffectiveness, its fecklessness, and its inability to do the bare minimum. They're very upset at and us. And by the way, Chad, progressives, Bernie Sanders, AOC, they were the most supportive of Joe Biden when the Build Back Better bill came out. Bernie Sanders prepared what he called the, the actual Build Back Better, right? Not the Green New Deal, not his plan that he ran on, but the actual Joe Biden, what Joe Biden ran on, right? And it was somewhere in the range of, the, of like $700 billion a year. Less than the military, but still, you know, a chunk of change. You know, it was six point sixty five six hundred fifty billion dollars a year, right? And they slashed it. They slashed it and burned it down to one point five trillion or one hundred fifty billion a year. And they couldn't even pass that. And all along the way, the left, progressives, Bernie, the squad, everybody, they they cut things. They agreed to cut things. They agreed. They negotiated. It was the right wing of the Democratic Party. It was the conservative Democrats. It was the moderates, the omni-liberal Democrats that fucked him over and got nothing done. Now, Joe Biden is a lazy, worthless piece of shit. So he didn't push back at all. But that is the reality of why he's a total fucking failure. Proletariat drink of choice, sparkling water. Goddamn right. Left in fighting as usual while right is working together. Sure, they might be building a space laser or whatever, but at least they're working together on a goal. It's not left in fighting. The left is not in fighting. I'm not attacking Majority Report. I'm not attacking TYT. I'm not attacking Jacobin. I'm not attacking socialists. What left in fighting? I'm not attacking Katie Porter. I'm not even attacking Elizabeth Warren. What left in fighting? Now, I don't consider Elizabeth Warren. I think she's a fake. I'm not attacking any left person. What left? You mean I'm attacking the center? You're goddamn right I'm attacking the right wing. You're goddamn right I'm pointing out they're doing nothing. And by the way, I'm not like Jimmy Dore who just hates these people to hate them. I hate them because they can't get a policy done. I hate them because in the face of moderate intransigence, the Democratic Party goes out of their way to uphold a moderate. They, Nancy Pelosi traveled down personally to campaign for a, the most right-wing Democrat after Roe v. Wade is overturned. And then when they bring the codification of Roe to a floor vote, he voted against it. And they accuse us of being funded by Republicans to, funded by Republicans to take down the Democratic Party. Now understand that our critique of the Democratic Party is that they aid and abet the GOP. That is what our critique is. The fact that they just sit by and allow authoritarians and theocrats in the GOP to do whatever they want, even under the leadership of Democratic lawmakers. How exactly are we- Hassan will never run for anything in his entire life. Uh, I, I don't know about that. I mean, he's young, man. He's 30 or 31 or whatever, like 15 years from now, maybe, you know? Imminently unlikely. <laughs> He's gonna run for something right now? I don't think so. He literally said he wouldn't. Yeah, he's 30 years old. You know that life, you go through life in stages, right? Where different things are a priority for you at certain stages of your life. I mean, maybe he'll be Bill Maher at 60. I don't know, but maybe not. I just don't, I just think asking them to do it is fucking stupid, personally. There's no shot with all his controversies, he'd never be able to win. Who gives a shit about controversies? Who gives a shit about controversies? There's Republicans who have literally gotten caught paying for their mistress's abortions and then won in deep red uh, districts. Controversies are not what make you lose. 
What do you think the average age of this his chat is older than Hassan's? Probably like 30, 28, something like that. Let's keep going. Empowering Republicans by being critical of Democrats for literally aiding and abetting the Republican Party. Number one. <laughs> Number two, okay, so you want to be critical of us because we're progressives, and of course we're going to be critical of milk toast pathetic Democrats who haven't accomplished a damn thing. But what about the rest of the Democratic electorate? I want to go back to what Jenk mentioned with that poll. Okay, let's go to graphic eight here. This is a headline from the New York Times. Most Democrats don't want Biden in 2024, new poll shows. With the country gripped by a pervasive sense of pessimism, the president is hemorrhaging support. Well, how much support is he hemorrhaging exactly? 64% of Democratic voters say they would prefer a new standard bearer in the 2024 presidential campaign, something that I've been calling for as well. And this is according to a New York Times Siena College poll, as voters nationwide have soured on his leadership, giving him a meager 33% job approval rating. So who's mainstream and who isn't? Because I'll tell you, 33% job approval rating is not mainstream. That means you're in the tiny minority that thinks sitting on your ass is awesome, never fighting for your voters is awesome, getting nothing accomplished is awesome. The two thirds of the country says, no, that's not awesome. We kind of hate that you're doing absolutely nothing. By the way, when they, the New York Times, even in their piece, as whenever they talk to any voter, and voters that had voted for Biden, they're in the quotes, their number one complaint was always, well, he hasn't done anything, right? But if you say that in Washington, their heads explode. They're like, what do you mean? Look at the, the speech he gave. Well, their response is, well, then we've got to, we've got to, you know, spend money on ads on the American Rescue Plan, on the bipartisan infrastructure plan. If you tell them, oh, Biden hasn't done anything, and they go, well, he has technically done things. Let's message on those things. Nobody cares about those things. They're not significant. They're minor. We all spent our stimulus check a long time ago. That's the reality. Mike, do you get money from the random banner ads they run during the stream? Yeah. Take some of my birthday money. Oh, thank you very much, Rebel Scum, for the five bucks. It's not very much, quite honestly. The day on abortion. You heard betting feels she called it bold. What what's bold what's, action? Well, you know what was in it? N literally nothing. No, no, it's worse than bold action. She referred to his bold plan. What plan? What is his bold plan? The Biden administration didn't expect SCOTUS, the Supreme Court, to reverse Roe on the day it reversed Roe. They were flat footed. They had no idea. They but were they were Convinced that that was not the day they were going to reverse Roe. And by the way, they had six weeks from the time that the Supreme Court draft opinion leaked and the time that the Supreme Court finally reversed Roe. They had no plan. Zero. Zero. And by the way, we're being critical of the Biden administration because of the fact that he had no plan. But let's also not forget, we're talking about the mainstream Democratic Party and they control Congress right now. Yes, with a slim ma a majority, but even with that slim majority, if Biden was willing to use the bully pulpit, if he was willing to use sticks in addition to the endless carrots he gives the goons in the Senate, like uh, Mansion and Cinema, maybe he could actually move them on the uh, legislative filibuster. I mean, they had a carve out for the, for the filibuster when it came to raising the debt ceiling to ensure that their stock portfolios didn't suffer. But when it comes to your reproductive rights, all of a sudden their hands are tied. Democrats can't do a damn thing, right? Avino, thank you for So the guys, a bunch of things here. There's a process uh, critique of, of uh, Biden, and, and Anna mentioned that, and the New York Times focused on that, because they think, Oh, you waited too long is a fair critique. Then there's a substantive critique, which is after the six weeks, then after another two weeks, they came up with a plan that has nothing in it. So the substantive critique is way more important. So they, Biden announced, well, I am really mad. And they explained in the story that they prepared for two more weeks to get him to appear mad. Is he actually mad? No, the, when he first did his first statement after Roe was overturned, he didn't appear mad at all. So they coached him on how to appear mad, like now pretend you care about women's rights and stuff. And here, say these words because that'll. And then, of course, the I can't stand DC reporters. They all were like, "Oh, good theatrics, good theatrics." Oh, the president seemed more animated today. It's an obvious act. So what was the substance? We're going to do commissions, 
And so at later, other organizations and groups and cabinet departments are gonna come up with a plan later, later, and then they're gonna report back on that plan. So that, that's not a plan, that's a plan Exiting to do it. Afghanistan is not minor. It's minor because he immediately then proceeded to do a genocide on the Afghan people by taking away all of their central bank funds and sanctioning one of the poorest countries in the world. So yeah, he doesn't get credit for me for that immediately engaging in war crimes. He got credit for me for five minutes when he pulled out and then he lost credit when he now engineered a famine to punish the people of Afghanistan. So yeah, the credit goes away. I'm not gonna sully my name supporting that crap. Plan. Yeah. So it had absolutely no substance, zero. So look, every time Democratic ass kissers will come out and say, oh no. And I'll say this, by the way, when Biden was doing things, go back and look at my YouTube. I have a record of like almost every, when Biden, when the Build Back Better thing was coming out, when, Bi when Bernie Sanders was writing it, when Democrats were getting behind it, and it was like, oh, they might do a $3.5 trillion bill. I was hyped. I talked up the child tax credit. I talked up other issues. I talked up free community college. I talked up universal pre-K. I talked up all sorts of programs, increased funding for uh, public housing. I talked up the Civilian Climate Corps. All the great programs that were in the bill, I was in favor of them. I said, wow, this would be pretty great. And guess what? They did nothing. So when they failed, I was I disapproved. What do you want me to do? Lie to you? I am not an unreasonable asshole who wants socialism in a bill, okay? When they pass good social welfare programs, I'm excited for that. I support it. But they didn't do it. They had to get rid of the child tax credit. They were gearing up to force you to have more. Yeah. You said big dick Joe Biden when he got it out of Afghanistan. Exactly. When he did the right thing and he stood up to the DC fucking blob, I supported him. I am not unfair. In fact, I'm overly fair. I'm too fair to these scumbags, to be honest. No, 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 you can't ever do anything. Well, Anna just told you, they, you can lift the filibuster. In fact, they lifted the filibuster. They lifted it. For something specific. For their goddamn stock portfolios. Yep. They lifted it when it was their money. Their money on the line. Yep. So they definitely can lift the filibuster. They're choosing not to uh, lift the filibuster. Oh, well, Mansion and Cinema. Well, okay, what has uh, Biden done to fight Mansion and Cinema? Nothing. He, he congratulates Nothing. them. He compliments Nothing. them publicly. Today, he complimented Cinema again on that BS gun bill that they passed with also nothing in it. Okay, and then what did he, you know what else he did today? And he said to this to Anna's point about, oh, you guys are helping Republicans. He's like, oh, I wanna thank my Republican friends. John Cornyn, number two uh, Republican in the Senate, terrible, awful, terrible person, uh, Senator Tillis, et cetera. He kept gushing about his Republican friends. And he's like, I'm sorry, I don't wanna get you in trouble because he loves them so much. At the same time, they attack their own base. You know why? Because they are Republicans. Yep. And so when we say they're Republicans, and there's like, a saying that I have, an axiom I have, Republicans fear their base, Democrats hate theirs. And it was just acknowledged by what Joe Biden just said. I don't want to get you in trouble, John, because John Cornyn, the Republican number two, is scared of the Republican base. He's scared of his voters. And Joe Biden hates us. He despises us. And he doesn't just despise the left. He despises mainstream Democrats that are even mad about abortion rights being taken away. Are you a woman who's mad that your abortion rights are being taken away? Well, you're an activist now, out of step with the mainstream Democratic Party. What's the mainstream Democratic Party? Whatever the corporate whore centrists want to do. Sorry to all sex workers, you, don't, you shouldn't be compared to them. What they do is far more uh, uh, debased. Sex work is real work. Being a prostitute for corporations is the lowest of the low. Look at the strategy in the midst of Roe v. Wade. White House privately signaling it's moving forward with anti-abortion court pick. Like, how dare you help Republicans? Well, if you have cognitive difficulties, there's nothing I can do to help you. You just can't understand someone. Get the hell out of the way. Let us fight the Republicans, because we're happy to do it. We can't wait to do it. 
We do it every single day and we show you how you could beat them. So if you're gonna be a loser, Democrat, like, oh, yeah, we should do nothing and like it. <laughs> then get the goddamn out of the way so we can protect women, so we can protect voting rights, so we can actually do the Democratic agenda. If you're gonna be a loser, at least don't brag about it and get the hell out of the way so real people who care actually do something. Thanks for watching the What scares me the most is like, if I felt like our voting system was secure, I probably would be more chill. I think what's making me so pessimistic is <clears throat> it's not just that the centrism is being discredited, which is objectively good. It's objectively good that centrism is being discredited. The bad part is not they're discrediting themselves so hard, but they're also allowing our electoral system to be undermined. So even if they fall out of power, Republicans are going to be voter suppressing, rigging the Electoral College, gerrymandering the, the Congress, blocking D.C. as a state, blocking possible Puerto Rican independence or statehood, blocking uh, ways of trying to fix the electoral. So, like, can a progressive win under a rigged system? Could John Fetterman or AOC actually win? And if they did win, how could they do anything with a Congress and a Supreme Court that's so far right? They're engineering a system that as the boomers die and move on into the next life, into the void, and for many of them, it's going to be the roasting fires of hell. They're making it so we can't fix it. They're losing so hard, we won't be able to fix their goddamn blunders. Are you watching the stream unsubbed? You're making income inequality worse. You are doing anti-praxis. We are the only Twitch stream that will not except scam advertisers and i will never fuck you over by selling you crap